Okay, there we are. There I am. A little bit more to the side now, but at least you can see uh, it's in the right kind of direction. Let's see if it's going live on my screen as well. We are live. Although my screen doesn't really want to work with me. I'm just restarting it or else I just can't see the chat and no, I actually like to see the chat there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see if we can improve this a bit. Well, just a bit. Okay, good evening. Uh, good morning, Tracy. I don't know who else is joining us. And my apologies for not like being the right link now since I shared a link and um, yeah, that didn't really work out as you just noticed. Your father was a broadcasting engineer. Well, maybe he can like help me once. Um, kind of still figuring it out since I'm using, it's, it's not really convenient, I'm using two phones. Uh, I don't use any fancy streaming software. Um, I just use like two phones that is logged in into one YouTube account. This is my dirty blue tube phone over here. Um, and I'm actually kind of going live with myself. Uh, so that's an option that YouTube has for someone um, as a solution for me that I can just do it with two phones, an older phone of mine and my new phone um, where, you know, all the audio and Microphones are hooked up. So hopefully this will work. And there's no echoing and the sound is good. Um, I will only know when the live stream is done when I can check it. So that's a little bit inconvenient, but you know, I believe you if you say it's good, if it's good quality and no echoing, then. Um, We should be fine. So I kind of changed my lighting setup uh, still, so I'm uh, also kind of still kind of figuring that out if it needs to be brighter or not. If I need to be, if I need to have a little bit more fill light from that side, I can do that. Or if this needs to be a little less bright, um, I have a new microphone which just came in from. Rode microphones um, that maybe, hopefully, improves the sound of my voice as well. So let's check that out. And let's. That's good to hear. Uh, last time I checked my own live back, I can only look it back at 7:20. Now I don't want to be a soprano, but I, I want my, I want it to be kind of. The other microphone is still a great microphone, especially now it's 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 pointing towards the slab, so. It only needs to catch the sound of my mulling, um, but it would be nice for that to, since it's like I'm an arm's length away of it, um, it would be nice that it also catches my voice better than the uh, previous microphone, which was a bit soft on the low end. So let's start with the actual business. Let's start making paint. 
Thank you, Tracy. Like I said, I believe you, so I trust you as well. Um, I have a little microphone over here, which you just probably heard. I don't hear it. That's really nice. Um, I'm sorry about that if that made a lot of noise, but I think it wasn't that bad. It shouldn't be as bad as um, that a little uh, high pitch was five minutes ago. So let's start making paint. I'm making, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this, uh, Brimis Felir Grun, Icelandic green pigment from Crema Pigmente. And um, I'm going to make that. I'm going to need, I'm probably going to need to change the cable on that camera, by the way. So i um, first going to make this. So let me know how this is sound. It's not a lot of pigment. It's like I have a, I tested it out with small bottles. I have a big bottle that I ordered a while back. Not a toxic pigment, but I don't want to inhale it. So, oh, we can make two scoops of that. That's just two scoops. Okay, uh, hearing it very well. Just please, um, is, is that like a positive thing, or will people, when they look at my life, just very quickly click it away because you know you know I'm adding something that looks like honey to something that looks like earth which it is um, so it might be a small niche that I'm working for but will they click it away before they find out what it is because of the, the sound Hey, what's the colorist? Good evening. It is quite a, um, I think, quite a good quality microphone that I uh, just installed, but also it's quite sensitive. So, if the people don't like the sound, they get a lot of high quality not liking, I think. Um, a watercolor is we really need, need to work on like a name. Um, it's okay if you don't want to share your name, but um, <laughs> since you three are like the, the first three that will always join. Um, AW, that's, that's pretty good. Veronica, welcome. You're squeamish. Well, then let's take this. Okay, let me know if that's too loud. If it is, um, I really can't help it right now. Apart from, I'm really needing to needing to turn the microphone around. Um, but let me know if this is too loud. All right, so I will talk as well, and I might need even move up my microphone a little bit.
as you can hear, this earth pigment is not as coarse as, as other earth pigments. It's quite a fine powder. I don't know if it says how fine they made it. No. Well, this is not the most coarse earth pigment that I have or can make. Uh, so it could be more stretchy. Oh yeah, people can turn down their volume, you're absolutely right. In some cases, I'm like, I need to get rid of that noise over there. In some cases, I'm really, uh, it's really inconvenient that I can turn down the volume of this. But, When I'm not live streaming, I'm um, actually just listening to music. So it really doesn't bother me that much. Um, watercolor is now it's um, the Icelandic green pigment. And I needed to top off a few pans that could need a little dollop of paint. If you heard that sound, that's the, that were my neighbors closing their blinds or I don't know how you call that in English. That's good to hear, Veronica. Thank you very much. It is quite a difference with what I started with, to be honest. Looking at like my very first life, um, I think I was just using one microphone, I think. Um, like the microphone that really didn't do well for my voice, as well as my voice combined with the uh, with the mulling that really didn't help either. And you now for the more technical people, I'm I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to that, but um, it's not like I know a lot about this stuff. Um, but I try to, you know, combine all my knowledge from photography, from my from when I was uh, on the Arts Academy, uh, when it came to lighting, and trying to mount everything and trying to, you know, make everything fit on my desk here. I'm still not happy. Like there's still improvements that can be done. Sounds like diamonds turning diamonds into paint. Wait until you hear as you write. That's it. Scratchy pigment. Um, 
if no one chooses that during this, I have a lot of Azuroid, by the way. I'm not going to make that. Um, check out my video on YouTube. It's uh, the Azuroid video. I have one of it. Um, it's it's quite a coarse, really a coarse pigment. So I really need to um, mill the pigment, as in grinding it, grinding it finer on my plate. And uh, after that, milling it and um, dispersing it into the binder. So it's really... Um, it's a fun pigment to make. Art Academy. Stacy. Tracy. Stacy. Wow. Tracy. My apologies. It's an Art Academy. Uh, not the Space Academy. But yeah, I went to the Art Academy. Uh, 2007-ish, I think. A long time ago. Yeah, that was a short I just I posted this week, um, made from the footage of the video I had. Um, are you talking to a watercolorist? Now it's getting personal. What was my favorite part about attending the art academy? Um, that's a difficult question, actually. I think for me it was quite uh, quite fragmented as a um, as a study. So um, you learned everything a little bit of everything so a little bit of doing everything so you got enough knowledge to go into depth about one thing or a couple of things um but that also made it quite difficult to find a focus especially in your first two and a half three years two and a half years it made it quite difficult to find like um a discipline that you want to focus on like um, if you wanted to focus on painting, that was quite difficult since the next semester you might completely focus on three-dimensional art or um, you always had three-dimensional art, but um, one time it was ceramics, the other, other time it was... Um, design um there's not really there wasn't really one thing for a longer period of time that you could kind of just go into depth um with so it's it's i enjoyed that part but that made it also very difficult Yeah, it's like the university degrees. It's it's it's, it's kind of the this. The, a lot of people, probably my wife as well, will disagree with me. But it's probably the the same level education. Not maybe um, I want to say intellectually, but um, not maybe how you need to study for things. But uh, when it comes to using your mind in in, in a certain way. Um, my wife was on university uh, at the same time as I did the art academy um, and it is it is very different as a study but the fragmentation of information and then finding your one sub not even a subject just your one um, interest maybe so you can go into depth. Um, that was that was quite difficult since there were also a lot of things that you didn't like. So um, there were also things that you thought you didn't like, but eventually liked. So that was a positive thing.
Um, Tracy says, I would think drawing would happen throughout the years. What do you mean with that? What do you mean with happen? Uh, it was curious why, um, why do you say art academy is not like university? Well, thinking, you know, book-wise, it's, it's really different. Um, when, um, when you're studying art history, for instance, on a university, it's a, um, it's more scientific. Right, I think that's that's the main difference here, at least here uh, with education. Um, it's all scientifically based, and arts academy isn't. <laughs> right, so that's 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 quite a main difference. Uh, I think she meant that uh, you would be drawing throughout your academy study. Obviously, yeah, drawing is a very large part of it. No matter, ooh, sorry, no matter uh, which subject, because you're always drawing, whether it is to design stuff or uh, sketching. To be honest, I'm. So I think it's the lighted. lighting is a bit too warm. Um, not like temperature wise, but just adjusting the lighting a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, basic understanding of drawing is the base of most. Yeah, yeah, it's. I think it's not even drawing. I think it's looking, observing, uh, and appreciating everything that is around you. Um, so um, being able to draw that and find your own style in it, your own way of documenting whatever you are observing is, is a part throughout the entire study and after that as well and um, still now I'm, I'm like making paint it's not i used to this studio used to be um my studio for like drawing even um making sculptures a bit but when um actually when i think covid started um i was getting more serious about paint making and um, I just stored all my stuff. And now I have a studio that's fully paint maker based. <laughs> um, it's really actually hard to find any drawing material except for things that I have for my, for my girls. Um, other than that, it's a pencil and paper for my sketches, a sketchbook. Um, anything else that I'm drawing? It's designing stuff, mostly, I think, labels. <laughs> no, but a watercolorist, uh, it's, it's, that's the main difference. Um, it isn't science-based, like color theory preferably is, but um, it's, it's not defined as in what is correct and what isn't. And it's a good thing that it isn't, but um, also it's really weird that most people still cannot do, uh, agree on what art actually is, even when you study or teach, taught, teached, no, 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 uh, on the Arts Academy. Um, there's still like always a discussion. This is especially for a watercolorist. There you go. Uh, 
I think glass blowing sculpture text to art, and I'm sorry, I need to look on that screen since there they disappear. Um, ceramics would all need drawing. Yeah, I, I think Janina, welcome. Uh, Gifel, welcome. Thanks for joining everyone. Uh, I think um, they all, they really all need a. A process, um, but I'm not sure that drawing is necessary, though, like fully necessary. It could be something else, I think. Taking taking pictures, for instance. Um, no, it's it's not. Even that part isn't defined as that is necessary. Um, Work with ceramics. When we're talking practical, yes, a design might be useful. When we're talking about sculpture, it might be useful as well, but you can also let the kind of clay guide you, same as some painters do. Okay, so um, back to this. This all happened because someone asked me, I think it was Veronica, What I like most about the Art Academy. Um, thank you, A Watercolorist. I love my studio as well. Uh, thank you, Veronica. And um, like I said, uh, everyone else, welcome. Thanks for joining. If you haven't already, don't forget to press that thumbs up. Um, okay, for the chat, which pigment shall I make into a watercolor paint now? I've just made the Icelandic green pigment. Um, but tell me, what should I do? I'm really bothered that this camera, this is like, this is here, it's moving now. This camera, it makes you shadow. When I'm looking, oh, it, it gives me a shadow because of the lighting. So I need to change that as well. So, um, Please tell me if you don't know anything about pigments or if you don't know which pigments uh, there are here in my studio. Just name it. If you know pigments, name it. If you don't know, um, smalt or manganese blue. Hmm. Do you have any of the following? PY157 and we'll feel... I think you just named the two I don't have. That's kind of getting personal now, but I'm going to check it. Yeah, it 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 is Earths actually, but. I'm just, you know, looking what everyone comes up with. Paolo, I'll send you a dot as well, so you can compare it. An interesting PBR6. That is a very mysterious and vague and interesting one. Now I'm really thankful for like this little community we're building. So uh, that's my way of saying thank you to to you. Um, but now to the personal stuff. So the pigments are missing. Py's. Py. Uh, One fifty seven. Uh, Py. One fifty seven. No sixty three. No, no, I don't have those yet. But you know, I don't miss them either. Kind of. Okay, I'm missing a lot here. Um, what's happening? Um, I'm in orange. Hmm. 
Hill, hello. Celadon Knights. Yeah, I kind of missed Arme Arme Armenian Orange. Um, what kind? Is it like a specific one? I know you like your oranges. Um, okay, let me have a look. And I'm going to take. Cable first. Sorry, it might get noisy. So this should be okay, right? Everyone still hears me? It is a tight case actually, or at least um, that's what I would call it in English. Um, in Dutch, we call it a letter box since um, it was used in all printing companies and the metal printing stamps of the letters were stored in that. It's actually a little collection with, well, let me just show it like this, with pigments. So I started um, showcasing all the pigments I have, making little labels of it, make my own small pigment collection there. But I actually have more pigments than little spaces in that thing, so. I did it in high school, Tracy. That's nice. Okay, um, so I'm going to look for an earthy orange. Uh, Celadonite will be nice as well. Thank you, Hill. Is it Hill or is, is that the right pronunciation? Pronunciation. It's a little bit late for me, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, this should be also working, me looking for pigments and you still hearing me. So let's have a look what we have. Um, I have a limonite here. A lot of hematites that actually don't feel like making a red earth. A celadonite would be possible. Um, like I said, I'm not like near the chat right now, so I'm not sure what you're saying. If you're saying anything at all, I don't want to assume that everything. I think this is interesting enough, but I hope so. Celadonite, green earth. That's a nice one. Um, but I did like the idea of smalt actually, since it's been a very long time since I made that. Uh, let me come back to the chat.
Mm, 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 mm. Armenian, Armenian Mummy Red Light is a semi-transparent red ochre with the orange. Yeah, I have that one as well. Mm, there's something that's called that. Power mechanics in high school. That's nice. There's two Armenian paint makers that don't promote others. Come on now, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm going to look it up actually because it's, it's interesting if they make like paint from local pigments. Um, yeah, I, I, I just took celadonite, but I might start with smalt. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe kind of to tease a watercolorist since that's quite noisy to make. Veronica asked if I work with neon pigments. I don't. I made some neon paint when I started making paint. Um, and that's actually, I, I bought them. The first ones that I bought were from a brand. Um, that I won't recommend anyone buying pigments from when they're making their own paint. And um, it's always kind of difficult for me to kind of say that. Um, since I don't want to talk bad about a certain brand, but and thanks, hell, that that's better. Um, let me just say it like this: Don't use pigments that say they only need water to be made into a paint, since that means it's a dried binder in there, and that won't. Uh, play nice with your own binder. In this case, they were actually made. Um, you only needed to add water to make watercolor watercolor paint. It felt like watercolor paint. It dried like acrylics or something that didn't redissolve. Um, looking at your last name, L L Leon is French. I'm not sure. Um, but welcome. Is it light fast in aquarelle? Well, that maybe made me think you're French. Um, it's not the most light fast, no, no. So it does um, change in color. It does. It's not a stable pigment. Uh, it's not the most stable blue. Let me just say it like that. Um, so. I have celadonite here, guys. It's, it's we're all into small. Okay. Actually, need to move boxes. I think for that. Okay. Right back. So I might have a small. I have a small over here that is. Good. It's a crema small. It's the standard version of crema, but I actually have antique smalts as well. That's probably looking at the date from when that guy got them. The first smalts batch that crema pigments is sold, which means looking at um, smalt as a pigment, the recipe for smalt got lost, or at least it wasn't made anymore and um, Georg Kremer or as uh, the English call him George Kremer uh, actually reinvented smalls as a pigment uh, since it was needed for I think a restoration of a church a friend of his um, needed a pigment 
and he recreated the recipe. And I want to say that was in the 70s, but I'm not sure. I I have a post about small uh, on my Instagram, and I w- will make a post about it on YouTube as well. But he kind of brought small back to the world, I think. I think that would be the proper way to say it. It's uh, made after a recipe from 1820. Um, and I'll have one of the first batches looking at the date that he sold. But this is the modern one, the one that you can buy as well. I'm not sponsored by Crema, but I really like that pigments. So let's make small. Not going to make too much of it though, since I don't think I have pens for it printed. Georg is is a a, a really really nice um, man as well. It's like he's a a um, a pigment maker and. Uh, you know, one of us, but um, they're really nice at Crema when it comes to customer service. Any 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 need of help, you can ask them anything and they'll help you with it. Um, let me have a look. Yeah, I, I can, if I can find the antique small, Veronica. Um, oh, sorry about that. I, um, I will, might make a little batch of that as well, just to compare it. Um, is small more vibrant than genuine lapis lazuli? Depends on what you do with the lapis lazuli. If you purify it, it can be one of the most vibrant blues. Um, It's really hard to compare since Smalt is a cobalt glass. So um, it really doesn't have anything to do with a mineral or ultramarine. If I'm making it like this, Please chat, then. What does it remind you of more? I have one pigment in mind that it really reminds me of when I'm making it like this, and this is scratchy. Um, this is not even, like, practical. I'm just doing this to tease a watercolorist. Sorry about that. Let's take a small muller. Not that this makes more noise, but this really isn't necessary for this. So now we are making a real noise. Hopefully you can still hear me. Usually with pigments like this, I just turn on my music really loudly. The nice thing of like hearing this very clearly is also hearing that it slowly disappears, slowly gets less, so you know you're doing well. For those of you making paint, thanks for lowering the volume. I didn't lower it, did it do it automatically? Is YouTube not helping me with teasing you? Um, it looks more a reddish Prussian blue. Yeah. It reminds me of that, a little bit like Indian Throne blue. 
Okay, I need to rewatch this since um, it's really interesting if YouTube kind of. adjust the sound a bit so that will be that will be weird still i think the temperature is too i'm sorry about this like i'm looking like uh, i'm wearing a white t-shirt and this is like bright white so i think that i think i know for sure the temperature is too warm I think it's a good description, yeah. So, don't fact check me on this, um, or do and share it in the chat, but, um, During the medieval times, I think it was during that time, um, they already had blue glass um, for the, uh, the stained glass windows. But, like, there were alchemists and, and, you know, people trying to make gold out of not golden things. That never worked. But a lot of pigments and colors got discovered during that time. Um, just people throwing stuff together and seeing what happens when you heat them up. And it was only after they've used like certain chemical compounds to just that they threw together uh, to make a uh, glass window blue. And they've been doing that for a long time. But it was later that they found out that it was actually cobalt that made it blue. with, you know, the chemical process that came with it, but, um, a small, is actually a quite clever pigment since it's just, it's colored glass, which was ground up to be a pigment to make a paint out of it. Really doesn't surprise me, Paolo, actually. But when was the first time they was used? I, I'm, I, I think I kind of assume you're looking into small, or was that based on like knowledge? Is that tiny Muller comfortable? Well. This one actually is, since it has like a little, little knob on the end. Um, I have one that really isn't, as this one, uh, or isn't. You know, when you're making paint like this, holding it, holding it like this, then this is fine. But this is more like I, I'm holding a pencil when I do it like this. Um, but keeping it like this, this really your hand, it slips away. I like this better. Although I do like the bottom of this better <laughs> since this one is too rounded off for my taste. Whereas this one has less of that. So it's all about personal preference though.
Mesopotamia, 2000 BC. That is a long time. And I'm quite sure they didn't know it was cobalt that made it, or the chemical reaction of cobalt that did that back then. Let's swatch it. So um, I actually have some quite cheap watercolor paper here. Um, and I don't want to use the cheap stuff, but let's just have a look on have a look on what that looks like on the cheap paper. Yeah, there's the stained glass that is as blue as like ultramarine blue now as a pure pigment. It's really wonderful to see some like original glass, especially here in Europe, especially, I think, no offense, um, everyone from the US, but. It, it was just as out of curiosity, uh, was stained glass used in early churches? in the US. Does anyone know that? Okay, guys, just check out the chat. Paolo is giving us a little bit of background information, which is really nice. Thanks for looking that up, Paolo. And while you're all reading into that, I'm swatching. Let's have a look. Where is? I want to do it a little bit more on the left, but that wasn't even on camera. So yeah, but I, I really like this um, to have like someone uh, looking into and sharing uh, the things while we're here in the chat. It is a lovely blue. Let's see if we can get something of a little bit more of a mass tone. Or a slightly more saturated line of paint. There we go. Just dropping some pigment right there. Ever letting this dry. Just going to let this dry. I think out of sight. No, it's not out of sight. You can still see it. PV15, oh come on. Well, there's PV15, I, I think I've showed that in uh, in the live. There's PV15 that are quite similar. Uh, they are so blue that you really, really the, the pigment itself looks like a violet, but Oh yeah, sorry, I missed the PV14. Um, so for those of you who are new here or just, you know, watch this live stream after it happened, these are my dot pens. So these are made to fit into a watercolor palette and they are big enough to hold a dot of paint or it's actually more like a mini pan size, maybe a little less. Uh, although I had a customer of mine on Etsy um, whose pan got like, it broke, I can do it like this, it broke off. It's actually quite hard to. 
Okay, I don't know what the meal did, but I can't break it. Anyway, um, I had a customer of mine with one side that broke off, which was quite unfortunate. And it might have been a misprint. Um, so I think it was actually a misprint. That's always a shame to find out. Although, luckily, it was with a dot of paint that was uh, gifted in the package. So it wasn't something that um, that person bought. But these are my dot pants. They fit into any watercolor palette as you know, a sample of a pigment or a paint that you might be interested in. But Tracy, um, there are, I mean, obviously they're Catholic churches, um, but um, are they like, how old is the US? 450 years ish? 400? Still a young country, but um, are they like old, old? Or are they quite modern churches which kind of brought back a, a, a let's say, a European tradition or a Catholic tradition? Do I have smalt in my shop? No, but if you're interested, uh, just send me a message on Etsy and I can make a custom order. If you're interested in a dot that I'm making right now, Twenty-five to three hundred years between twenty-five and three hundred. That seems a bit young, right? I mean, I think the U.S. already existed when I was born. Okay, sorry. I got that. I got that. Um, I thought it kind of celebrated its four hundredth anniversary a while back. If I'm right, hopefully I am. Like I said, it's late and I don't want to make mistakes there, but yeah, but that's Texas, like the first colonies. When 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 did that happen? And I'm not getting into the colonies and the history and what the Europeans did back there, but. Can you get me a drink as well, a watercolorist? Or a W. Anyway, like I said, if you're interested in a dot like this or any pigment, um, just send me a message on my Etsy or here on YouTube. Um, and I'm happy to oblige, really. I can make anything for you um, if I have the pigment. So don't come with uh, the difficult yellows, right? You know who I'm talking to. Yeah, you're a young country. Absolutely. Okay, so we have smalls over here. This little swatch is drawing nicely. Um, also, I haven't opened it yet, but today I received uh, The Art of Color by uh, Kelly Grovier, I think you pronounce it like that. And oh, actually, let, let's just open it. Or shall we? No, I'm opening it. So this is um, 
Let me just show you. The History of Art in 39 Pigments. This is a good book for us. Right, so, uh, like I said, I really need to look into it, and I'm going to read this. I'm actually, I'm absolutely, oh, there's an orange. Let me just do this for you, Paolo. Orange. Starting with all pigments. Beautiful. I have that. Going to saffron as a pigment. I have that in my kitchen. Chrome orange. That was a beautiful cadmium orange. It's a beautiful illustrated book. And there's quite a lot of, and I really like this. Uh, some color theory history. I really like how much text there is actually with each example. There's loads of books on colors. Um, like I said, I'm not sponsored by anyone yet, hopefully in this future. But um, there's lots of books with just, you know, a painting and a small text like this has been used and a picture of the pigment and that's it. This actually has quite some quite some information with it. Um, Leon, you raise a good question. Where can you find documentation on pigments used in churches? Oh, sorry, this is a microphone. I'm sorry about that, guys. Really, I don't hear it. Maybe I need microphones as well. So I can... Would I need that? Anyway, sorry about that. Um... Documentation on pigments used in churches is mostly used to find into uh yeah. That's actually a good one. Um sorry, I'll just I shared this on my Instagram story and I think no, I think only on my Instagram story. So it's by uh Thames and Hudson. So, I don't know, screenshot it, write it down, whatever you like. Put it on pause and then just obviously continue watching the live stream. Watch it back a couple of times because I'm, like, I'm really in need of my watch hours. I've been talking about that, I think, previous life, maybe the life before that. Um that my life don't get shared until I get, like shared to a wider audience until I get a thousand subscribers. And um, I can't monetize my YouTube until I get a thousand subscribers and a thousand watch hours, which is quite a lot I found out actually. Um, so that's kind of me. This is kind of me figuring out how to uh, how to do that, making my audio better in my live streams, in my videos, working on my lighting as well, a little bit of like uh, background lighting to give a little bit of distance between uh, me and my background instead of having like the same lighting everywhere in my quite low flat ceiling. Um, and I've I've said this to Paolo a couple of times already, but to all of you, uh, if you have any kind of suggestions or feedback for me, um, what I can improve in everything you kind of see here, I can, I think I can share what I have over here, right? Should I just share it? Oh. We can do that. So what we have over here is um obviously there is a phone and there's my slab and there's a little light for uh the slab there's a lat panel with a diffuser in front of it and i'm still going to get a diffuser for that one um so this is this is it right now and everything is like mounted there's a light over there uh, to make like this blue and that's like orange and that's blue and that's that's everything. So, um, 
There's quite there's quite some information just to kind of get back to the chat. There is um, quite a lot of information about pellets that have been used in certain uh, areas of time. So um, just Google a certain uh, period from art history and then pigments used, for instance. Um, Janina, good night. It's quite late here, isn't it? Yeah, good night. Thanks for joining. Um, but that's quite quite some information on on the subject. So I see there's some more people um, still, or again here in the chat. Uh, if you haven't done it already, please hit the like button. If you are enjoying the live stream, if you aren't, please share any feedback with me. Um, because I can really use it, like I said, my entire setup, but also um, anything else here. Like I said, I'm making paint, but also it's like talking about paint. Well, that makes sense, Paolo, right? I think enamel is just a glass-like surface, right? So. Kind of makes sense. Um, has anyone here, any one of you here, read the book uh, Das Farbe Buch? Um, and I think Janina already left, but... I don't know if there's anyone else from Germany or anyone who can actually read German who isn't from Germany because I've been looking at that book. I'm actually very interested in buying it since I've seen how well illustrated the book is. Beautiful pictures, beautiful examples. Um, And the only thing that's stopping me is that uh, my German isn't that well, to be honest. And the book is, I think, 200 euros. Okay, everyone's back. Paolo's back. Watercolorist is back. Um, <laughs> thanks, Veronica. Yeah, no, I don't want to. I don't want to beg for it um, at all. But I don't have enough time to make enough content to get there in a quick time. So it's. Uh, I I shared that a while back. I think it's 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 quite hard that. And it, I didn't expect it to be that hard. But really, thanks for joining. I uh, hope you like it. Most lives, I make a little bit more paint and I'm working a little bit more with pigments. But now I'm a little bit more interactive since most time, uh, lives, you only just see the slab of my hands and you won't see me. And um, uh, yeah, I, I thought this was a little bit more personal to talk with you um, and, you know, chat. So thanks for joining. Uh, Gifu, yes, das Farbe Buch. That's the exact right way how you spell it. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful big. I think it's quite a big book. Um, that book will be released in Europe on the twenty seventh with Twitch book. Crema already kind of it's it's sold out on Amazon and Crema sells it. So, or is it because it was sold out at a lot of places, maybe it's going to be 
Oh, sorry, we're talking about... Wait, am I missing things? This one will be released the 27th. But it's... I'm, I'm in Europe. Now I feel special. Now, sorry, um, this is that's that's weird. Though I did pre-order it, so it might be. I'm not teasing you, Paolo. Not at all. <sighs> the smell of a new book. Anyway, this is beautifully dried. This isn't yet. And uh, Leon, um, it is Das Farbebuch. And um, Geef will just type that in just a little bit, a bit above in the chat. Um, so, yeah. And thanks, Tracy. Thank you very much. Sell it tonight. So, it's not that it right, matters that I just opened a new bottle, bottle but who is the author of Das Farbebuch? Um, Anyone in the chat help me? No, no one. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, das Farbebuch is uh, written by. Uh, oh, it's in back order again. Sorry about that. Um, in the summer of 2023, it's 200 euros. And I really can't see who is the author of it. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, that's a lot of them. And, uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's a lot of them. That's a lot. I mean, I can just share this. Probably I can do that if my tech wants to work with me. There we go. I just copied it from my computer to my tablet. I really like those little things that help me speed up things. Um, that's a product page from a German website, um, uh, but it is... Oh, it's written down there, uh, and it has like the pictures. But I really hope it gets like a translation. That is interesting, Tracy. Really, Colibri pigments—they are Russian, actually. Now they are saying they're Armenian. Maybe they moved. I mean. With everything happening. I mean, I've, I've spoken with, with them, um, I want to say personally, but with, with their contacts um, directly when the war started and after that as well. And I uh, actually bought pigments from them afterwards since they are really nice as pigments. Um, maybe they moved I don't know I, I, I will ask them that's, that's interesting there are chemical formulas in the book yes yes it's like yeah, well, you're looking at it it's a really nice looking book with yes a what's called risk color samples um, so it's it's really 
I think the the cover says like a lot. Those little kind of piles of pigments that speak to us people. As you can see, I don't know if you really did see, but as you might be able to see, it's kind of a bluish, bluish green in its pure form. But when I go over it with my palette knife, and you can kind of see it transforming on the slab. When I go over it with my palette knife, it turns into a chromite kind of looking green. Right? Did I say chromite? Chrome oxide. Um, since the war, uh, there's no trading or banking with Russia. I think they found a way, like to to handle that. Um, at least when I when I bought from them, I know um, the way I needed to pay changed a bit, but it was still like a uh, well known. I want to say PayPal, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I paid with PayPal before. Uh, let me take the big Miller again. Okay, so. This might get noisy, but we just learned that YouTube interferes <laughs> with me making noise. And I really want to get rid of this and the shadow that it gives because it's really it's really annoying. Okay. Let's get started. Now this is not glass, this is earth. Just one more thing for everyone joining, and hopefully, um, people that will rewatch as well. A really interesting thing about green earth is what it looks like in its pure form. And it, this is a very like obvious sound when you know what it looks like in its pure form. Let me get a, a little piece. So this is, before it was ground into a pigment. So on top of the letter box over there, I have pieces of raw pigment. And this is almost dark gray, blackish, Maybe a slight green hint to it and a lot of dirt. That is green earth in its pure form. This is actually bohemian green earth. So it's quite a um, a vivid, almost pastel, but a vivid soft green earth. Um, but in its pure form, it looks like this. Celadonite isn't exactly the same. Um, but when we're talking about green earth and we're talking about the minerals um, that make it green, now it's really it's not it's not it's not a mineral. It's like almost um, dried up mud. When you when you pinch it, it just falls apart into little pieces that sound like this.
That's a really, I'm sorry, Paolo, that's a really random statement. If I wasn't getting a knife, I might buy that. <laughs> so you're buying a knife. It uh, did look pretty dry in the slab default. Um, it's a rather thirsty pigment. So I start with um, a certain amount of binder. I wet it. And then I have a look on the slab. If it's in need of more binder or just water to make the mulling easier. Nothing wrong with a nice knife, I think. Are we talking kitchen knife or hunting or what are we talking about? Just out of curiosity. Maybe a pellet knife. Uh, Hill, I wonder if you need hearing protection long term to do this craftsmanship. Well, actually, if I would, I would get a, a notification on my watch that it is too loud and it is not saying anything. So, I don't think I need that. A chef's knife, okay. You're not a psych. I'm not a set. This wasn't any like. I would never think that of you. But yeah, kitchen knives or chef's knives, they are very expensive. So, as you can see, just to go back to the paint, since we are making paint and chatting, as the title says. I don't need to forget the first part. No, we are actually making paint. It is a very thirsty pigment. And it's a fun thing to see. It almost looks like oil paint. I mean, you could literally paint like impasto work with this stuff. Let me have a look if I have one of those notifications still open somewhere. Because I have two six year olds. <laughs> no, I don't have them. So it really it, it, it happens that <laughs> we're actually oh let, let's have a look. Okay, so let's have a look. Um this is the, the decibels when I'm just, sorry about that. I've never tried that. So let's have a look at what it does. No. So it gives a warning at 90 decibels that if you stay in that environment for longer than 30 minutes, it can cause permanent hearing damage. That's what it says. But 
we're below that. Leon, Michael Harding smack talks chromium oxide green in one of his videos here on YouTube, yet he manufactured it. <laughs> That's weird. Um, Mm, 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 mm. That is those are those are nice pigments. Uh a water colorist, absolutely. And uh Tracy, it, it is it is not the most easy paint to mold, but do notice, and I think this is no, I think I know this is the last one. But notice what happens when I just add a little bit of water to the slab. If you watch, see me like looking really angry down on the slab, it's because I am like it's getting personal with this pigment. But no, we're using a lot of force, down force on the slab to crush the pigment as much as possible. But you hear a lot of difference with when I started. And I'm using a lot of down for slow. <sighs> I need to take a breath kind of thing. Um, it takes a lot of uh, force with some pigments to efficiently mill or even practically mill enough. So next time I need to get rid of that as well. But guys, this is not chromium oxide. I know you'll, it really looks like it a lot, actually. But this is celadonite. Celadonite, celad, I don't know. It's quite a good workout. But to be able to do this without getting tired or um, straining a muscle or anything. Um, I'm working out, like real working out in the gym next to it as well. Okay, let's do the Heckman gauge test and see where we are. This is, it's getting so sticky and thick again already. Where? It's not even on there in the right way, but we're not even there yet. Although it is a very transparent pigment as well. So no, we're not there yet. I 
Oh, Hill, when you start making paint, you'll get buff, really. Sorry for the sound. I think that's a really, really good alternative to just buy paint from a certain paint maker that is hosting this live. That narrows it down, I think. As I said, like in previous lives, you can check if it's fine enough, like this. If you look at those lines and see how gradually, gradually it goes from opaque to transparent, yeah, where you can just see the paint or the slab. Um, can we just get rid of that thing? No, that's too low. Well, anyway. Um, If you don't have like a Hagman gauge like uh, like I have, um, that's a really good way to to test if it's fine enough. So, water does a lot. It makes the movement more easy. Also, the control that you have over how fine you're working. So, water is very important in watercolors. That sounds weird. That sounds kind of obvious, though. Don't feel bad, Tracy. I know when I'm taking <laughs> when I'm taking a green earth um, and making it into paint, it's never like an easy thing. If we were making chromite or chrome oxide green, PG7, and it's actually it is good now. So you can see here, and let's swatch it as well. So if I were to make chrome oxide green. That's just easy. But the more you mull it, the more it turns into a real green earth paint. for it over here and then they should be over here PG23 a genuine celadonite green earth If I can get anything into the pan.
Um, uh, Leon, are, are you talking about um, pigments or paint? Because I know, like, they can be interchangeable, but I really can't see how I could do that with my pigments. Like, I, I, I think I need, like, twice or maybe three times the room that I have now to even try to organize that. <laughs> It really needs like small layers and even, sorry about this, and even when you make those small layers, um, you always need to make sure that there's no air trapped underneath. When this dries, just poke it with a metal stick, something that's like clean and doesn't leave anything. Um, okay, yeah, paint. Now then I can kind of imagine like uh, sorting paint versus pigments. Um, it's more doable. Still respect because that is commitment. That's good to read. That's not, it is true. It's like whether it is someone kind of looking things up or we have a discussion about something or, um, you know, the things like this. It really is true. But that, like I said, I'm really thankful for like this small community that we're building here. Um, and hopefully we can get more people to join us. Since uh, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I mean, I'm... I'm to be honest, I'm, I'm a business, like I'm a person sitting here talking to you, uh, being thankful for other people um, and, and socializing with them. But as a business, as a brand that tries to uh, not only be kind of a pain maker, but also a content creator on YouTube, um, it really has it at, its advantages when you can... Um, monetize your YouTube channel. Um, like I can, I can post my products on YouTube. I can, um, uh, there's, a lot, there's, there's a lot of stuff, but anything, um, anyway, even if as like we, us people uh, stay this size and I won't grow as a channel 
uh, I won't quit because I really uh, appreciate the socializing part and the interaction between all of you as well. Um, okay, it's, it might be a weird question, uh, but, but would, would anyone kind of be interested in, you know, instead of me being alive here, joining myself here, would anyone be interested in, in joining the life here to kind of interact with each other, the chat, I don't know. It's just a thought that I had, like, maybe. I mean, it's, like, my channel, but... Um... I think, like, the interaction between you is as important as... Uh... Well, as important. I'm just part of your in your conversation. I'm just visible, that's the only thing, difference. So that's it for today. The making paint that is. Thanks, Tracy, that really means a lot to me. You know, a watercolorist, I you know, do sell a palette that is already filled with my paint. You know that. It's just. Um, thanks, everyone. I really, 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 mean, really means a lot to me. Um, and I really enjoy this as well. Um, although. I could be more efficient in work making paint if I don't chat along. Yeah, guest appearances, that, that's nice. Um, let me have a, let me just do it like this. And I think we have enough paint on the palette knife for a swatch, right? No, I don't mean as moderators. It's uh, like just me joining here on camera. Being like visibly joining us. As I said, it is quite a transparent pigment. So, Celadonite Green Earth PG23. There you go. And it's you know it's fine if you're too shy you you don't like you know being it's it's quite it's kind of a threshold uh, it was for me as well like I made my all my videos 
just filming my slab and my hands and not even like arms, but just my hands and milling and things like that. Um, but, you know, doing this, I think it's important if I'm using my voice that you can actually see who's, who's speaking. Um, if you're good friends with artists, makers then you can invite them to share yeah uh i might have something interesting to reveal but that's later because it's not certain yet but it is kind of around that topic um i'm going offline guys i'm going to call it a night it is 11 p.m here um it will be interesting to have Georg Krem or David, his son. Um, uh, so, people from Crema Pigmenta, just write that down. I will contact you soon. Um, that will be very interesting. I know of a few more that will be really interesting like that. So we can make it a series. No, it's not a podcast. I want this interaction to happen, not just people passively watching and listening i want i want interaction because that's what i really appreciate about you guys everyone uh have a great day have a great night um and uh again like if you liked it thumbs up if you don't follow me yet follow me if you want to share anything that i posted on my channel be my guest Hopefully, see you soon. Um, I'm going to really have a look at this camera here um, because it annoys me. Other things don't fidget on the microphone. Lighting is good now here. The shadow is still coming from that thing. So this this is this is one thing I really need to change. Uh, if there's anything else you need to change, please send me a message or comment um, just down in the comments below when I post this live. A free apprentice. Interested, Tracy. Huh. Something to think about. Anyway, guys, have a great day. See you next time hopefully. And in the meantime, be careful, take good care of each other. I'm not getting sentimental here. See you next time, guys.